Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'm going to cover Laplace transforms. Just a brief introduction. So let's say that we have a function f of t, a function of time. If we take the Laplace transform of it, we typically denote it like this. We have a cursive looking L, some square brackets. It says that we're operating on f of t with this Laplace operator, Laplace transform operator that is. And what that gives us is notationally capital F of S. So we typically use capital letters for Laplace transformed quantities and lowercase letters for functions of time. Now S is complex whereas T was real. So we're actually taking a function of time and through this Laplace transform operation converting it into a function of S, a complex variable. Now we can also go the other way. So we denote that with a cursive L with a little inverse sign. So if we operate on a Laplace transformed quantity, f of s, that gives us f of t. So we call this one a Laplace transform, call this one an inverse Laplace transform. Those two operations, that is. Now let's look at the definition Here it goes. So f of s is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of whatever your function of time is, f of t, multiplied by e to the negative st dt. So if you look at this integral, it we can see how we go from a function of t to a function of s. We're integrating over t, so by the time we're done integrating, it's no longer a function of time. It's just a function of s. So let's just do a quick example. Let's imagine, well we don't have to imagine, let's say that we have a function of time that is a step. So let me switch to another color. Come along here, we're at, we're at zero for negative t. At t equals zero, we fly up to some amplitude a, and then we hold there. So one way to denote that, that we've seen um, in some other videos, is we could write that mathematically as this funny looking function that looks like a 1, but it's really a, um, uh, a function that has some meaning, and it means exactly what we see here in the red. So let's go ahead and take the Laplace transform of the unit step. call it unit step because it jumps up to 1. When we multiply it by a, which I should have done right there, then it jumps up to a. Okay, now let's do the Laplace transform. So f of s is the integral from 0 to infinity of a, our function of time, which is this uh, step, times e to the negative st dt. Now before we jump in and do this integration, if we stare at this a minute, we can see that all of this strange complexity here with the unit step function actually goes away when we look at our limits of integration. We're integrating from 0 to infinity. This function is exactly equal to 1 over 0 to infinity. And this is a constant. So I can rewrite this integral a little bit more nicely as the integral from 0 to infinity of just e to the negative st dt. Now that's an integral that I can do without too much trouble. Specifically, I'll get a over s with a negative sign due to that, e to the negative st, and evaluate that from 0 to infinity. If I take the top limit, at infinity, and I plug it in for all the occurrences of s, especially when I plug it in here, I just get 0. Minus, now I plug in this limit into s, and I'll get a over s e to the 0, which is 1. And I need to pick up that minus sign, so that becomes a plus. So this is a over s. And that's it. So that's the Laplace transform of this f of t. Now, what we can do with that, 
and what people have done for a long time is they've postulated, they've just come up with a whole bunch of different functions of time and then gone through this process and developed the functions of s. And there's no need to repeat that over and over again. People have put it in books and in tables and so forth. And so what they've done is created Laplace transform tables. And here is a very tiny example of one. What you'll typically see is the function of time on one side and the function of s on the other, a line down the middle, and then they start listing all the fun functions. So here's a few. Uh, the Dirac delta function is just one. That's my favorite uh, quantity to Laplace transform. The unit step, which we just did, is 1 over s. t, so a ramp, is 1 over s squared. And another good one that we often see is e to the negative a t, and that is 1 over s plus a. Now a lot of times when we're Laplace transforming a function of time, um, and let's say that we were going to Laplace transform f of t equals 3 e to the negative t. Now that function has values for negative t through positive t. But if you remember, the Laplace transform is an integration from 0 to infinity. So just to keep it all straight and consistent when we're describing our functions that we're Laplace transforming, oftentimes we'll go like this. We'll multiply them by a unit step. What that means is it sort of reminds us that this function of time is zero for negative time, like so. And then, in this case, it would jump up to 3 and decay out. Ooh, that's not a very good decay. Decay out like that. So what this does is it makes sure that that function is zeroed out for negative time. We don't have to do that, but it just is a uh, convenient thing to do. As I say, it reminds us exactly what the function is that we are Laplace transforming. Okay, um, so let's use our table and do an example. Actually, we could do this example here. So if we wanted to take the Laplace transform of this, let me switch back to black. <clears throat> we can look at our table and try to match up what we see here. Now, sometimes people will look at a function like this and say, well, you know, I see e to the negative a t here, and I see this unit step here. And so I'll do the following. This is wrong, by the way, but I'm going to show you anyway. They go 3 over s plus a, that's this piece. And then there's a step in there. So they say, well, I must have to multiply it by 1 over s. Well, that's completely wrong. Okay, so you never want to do that. Um, we have to look at this as a entire function. Another way to think of it is every element in this Laplace transform table can be multiplied by this, this unit step. It kills off that function for negative time. So if I do that, then I can see that this this function is actually sitting right there with a 3 in front of it. So f of s is just 3 over s plus a. Oops, s plus 1, because a in this case, what multiplies that negative t is 1. So there it is. So you can see that using the Laplace transform table is a pretty speedy thing to do. Um, it's very speedy, much better to use a Laplace transform table when you're trying to take the inverse of Laplace transform. So for instance, if I was given this 3 over s plus 1, I would look it up over here and I would then say, oh, it's equal to e to the negative t in this case with a 3 in front of it. Now there's just one more property uh, of the Laplace transforms that I'll cover in this video. 
and I've sort of exploited it already here. It seemed like a reasonable thing to do to multiply 3 by e to the uh, to multiply the Laplace transformed quantity of this by 3 to calculate f of s. But really what I was exploiting when I did that is the fact that the Laplace transform operation is linear. And what that means is that if I were to take the Laplace transform of something like this, where alpha and beta are just some scalar constants, then this is equal to alpha times f1 of s plus beta times f2 of s. So if I want the Laplace transform of alpha times f1 of t, I can just take the Laplace transform of f1, of f1 this thing, and then multiply the result by alpha. And that's exactly what I did here. Furthermore, if we had two things summed together, like the f1 and the f2, I can individually take the Laplace transforms of f1 and f2 and uh, then combine them. So let's just look at a quick example of that, and we'll be done. And I think to do that, well, I'll leave my Laplace transform table up there, but we might need that in just a second. So here's the example. Say we have h of t is equal to 2 minus e to the negative 2t. And I'll go ahead and multiply that by that unit step function. Before we take the Laplace transform of this, let's go ahead and uh, plot it. Here's t. Here's h of t. I'll draw a couple horizontal lines on here, basically making a bit of a grid. Okay, so at t equals 0, just to get a sense of what this function looks like, we have 2 minus 1, or, and I should draw this out, negative 2. So at t equals 0, we have 2 minus 1, which is 1, so it's right there. Now, for negative time, because of this, this function is 0. So it goes like so, and then it jumps up to 1 right here at time equals 0. And if we look at far down the road in time, uh, t equal infinity, this term goes to 0, and we end up at 2, which is right there. So we, the function looks something like this. And then it stays at 2 forever. Okay, that's strictly just to get a little bit of a sense of the function that we're working with. Now let's go ahead and take the Laplace transform of it. One way to look at this is that h of t is 2 times that unit step minus e to the negative 2t, again, times that unit step, and those two quantities this function and, and this function were in the Laplace transform table. We had f of t and f of s, just as a reminder. We had the direct delta function. I won't rewrite that one. We had the step, which is 1 over s. And we had e to the negative a t, which was 1 over s plus a. So when we combine these two together using superposition, because the Laplace transform operation is linear, we get 2 over s minus 1 over s plus 2. We could combine these if we wanted to. Cross multiply, get 2 s plus 2 minus s over s s plus 2. We don't have to do this, but sometimes it's nice to write the result as a single rational function. 2 s minus s gives us s plus 4 over s, s plus 2. Beautiful. So, by the way, I should have noted that this is h of s, and this is capital H of s. Put a box around it, and we're done. So, 
just a brief introduction to Laplace transforms. Things to remember are they're linear, so superposition holds. We often use Laplace transform tables to go back and forth, take the Laplace transform of a function of time, or inverse Laplace transform a function of s. Uh, the definition has an integral, uh, is based on an integration, but again, the Laplace transform table is probably the way to go most of the time. So again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.